Welcome to ASA Central Line, the official podcast series of the American Society of Anesthesiologists, edited by Dr. Adam Stryker. Welcome to another episode of Central Line. I'm your host and editor, Dr. Adam Stryker. I'm joined by Dr. Daniel McIsaac, Associate Professor of Anesthesiology and Pain Medicine at the University of Ottawa, and Dr. Mark Newman, Horatio C. Wood, Associate Professor of Anesthesiology and Critical Care at the University of Pennsylvania Perlman School of Medicine. We're going to discuss the work of ASA's Committee on Geriatric Anesthesia, and specifically, the new frailty toolkit the committee has released. Welcome to the show. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for the invite. Yeah, absolutely. Well, let's just start with a little bit of, of background. You both sit on the Committee on Geriatric Anesthesia. Can you tell us a little bit about the committee and its work? Dr. Newman, you're the past chair and a current member. Why don't you start? Yeah, well, we've been interested in, in helping to support ASA members uh, for several years to take the best care possible of older adults undergoing surgery. And older adults are becoming a larger and larger segment of, uh, of all patients who are, who are getting surgery in the United States and worldwide. And, and we've been trying to find ways to support that. Uh, we did a survey of ASA members and got responses from about 1,700 uh, ASA members in 2018. Uh, and part of that survey uh, was to ask what kinds of resources people uh, were looking to have to improve their practice, web-based guidance and other resources to implement best practices for care of older adults, like frailty screening, as we're going to discuss today, was something that members highlighted to us as, as a high priority. Well, and let's go ahead and uh, just dive right in on the frailty toolkit. Dr. McIsaac, why don't you tell our listeners what the members should expect from the new toolkit and how they might use it? Absolutely. So I think the first thing to, to mention here is that this is a toolkit. It's not meant as a practice guideline. This isn't the Committee on Geriatrics or the ASA telling members how they should be caring for or assessing older patients. This is meant as a practical resource to support some of these needs that have been identified amongst members of the ASA when it comes to you know, taking steps toward providing you know, really high quality perioperative and anesthesia care uh, to our, our older surgical patients. So the, the focus of the toolkit is, is to give people practical tools. And I think there's probably two big picture pieces of value that they're gonna get out of this. Number one is, is for people who they've heard of frailty, that they get a sense that it's probably important, but they wanna learn a little bit more, but they don't necessarily wanna you know, head to PubMed and, and read 50 articles. They just wanna get the distilled essence of what frailty is and why it might be relevant to their practice. So for sure, that kind of information is gonna be there for them. I think the second group is, is kind of naturally the next step you take from there, which is what can I do now that I understand what frailty is in terms of potentially considering incorporating it into the perioperative care that I'm providing. So what are some practical resources um, so that I can understand what frailty tools are out there, what their pluses and minuses are, how I may be able to choose the best one for my practice, and then finally, where might I use it? So we actually have multiple modules put together within this uh, toolkit that have been developed and reviewed by experts on the Committee on Geriatric Anesthesia to first give people an introduction, but a really you know, distilled, succinct clinical perspective on what frailty is. Then a nice overview with some nice visuals around what different frailty assessments are commonly used, what different tools there are, how they can use them, and how they can maybe pick one that has the right strengths uh, for the kind of setting that they're working in. And then finally, a number of use cases so that either they may be able to you know, identify from one of those use cases a similar place in their practice where they may want to apply frailty assessment, or maybe if they're thinking about improving some processes or changing um, how they may be, you know, assessing older patients before surgery, they may be able to link back to some of these use cases again to get a sense of, of where they may be able to bring these tools in to their practice should they see that being, a, you know, appropriate. So, you know, at the end of the day, as I mentioned, this is there as a resource. Um, and certainly the ASA is currently working on more specific guidance for care of older surgical patients in general. But this is meant as a resource for members who need some practical information and may or may want to not want to, you know, move that over into the practice, depending on their own circumstances. Um, well, this might be a good time to uh, lay out a little bit of the history with regard to frailty. When and how did uh, anesthesiologists begin to consider a patient's level of frailty an indicator of post-procedural outcomes. Um, maybe even comment a little bit on how that idea of frailty has changed over time, or if more attention paid to it has affected how anesthesiologists think about it. Mm -hmm. 
For sure. I think that's a great question. I think an obvious place to start is, you know, what are we talking about when we're talking about frailty? So frailty is a concept that's kind of been around medicine in general for the past 25 years or so, understandably something that started off in, in geriatrics um, and something that has kind of progressed over time and, and kind of moved over into the acute care sphere as well. So about 10 years ago, we started to see some, some publications coming out looking at this concept of frailty that had been you know, translated over from geriatrics and trying to see how that may allow us to better identify older surgical patients at high risk of bad outcomes after surgery. I think it made sense at that time, we're starting to see that significant growth in our older you know, demographic among surgical patients. And so we started to see some study and we started to see some promising results that this may be a useful tool for us to be able to identify older patients who are particularly high risk before surgery. Now, frailty is also a, a challenging concept, you know, to try and get your head around if you're just going to go out and attack the literature or, or do a Google search. And that is because frailty has not had one single definition that everybody agrees upon, either at the start or even now 25 years into it. What we can certainly see general agreement on when it comes to frailty is that frailty is in a lot of ways reflective of biologic age as opposed to, you know, calendar years. I think everybody can probably relate to seeing two patients in clinic on a given day, both are in their late 70s, both have coronary artery disease, both have hypertension, both are coming for a knee replacement. But when you look at them from the end of the bed and you think about their overall health status, one is clearly a lot more vulnerable to having a bad outcome after surgery than the other one is. And frailty is really a, a useful tool for trying to quantify and differentiate between these two individuals. And, and at the kind of foundation of it, frailty is, is something that affects health in a multidimensional manner. So it's not just affecting your physical performance. It's not just protect, uh, affecting your cognitive performance, but multiple dimensions of health have lost some degree of reserve. And because of this, that older patient is vulnerable to having adverse outcomes after surgery. And by doing a frailty assessment, we can try to start to quantify that risk and allow the patient to get a better sense of the risk they're facing, while also hopefully allowing the anesthesia care team and the other members of the perioperative team to start making a plan that is potentially more um, aligned with the specific needs that they may have. Now, certainly at this point, 10 years into you know, frailty being well studied in the perioperative space by anesthesiologists, by surgeons, by geriatricians and others, we know that there's a very strong association between frailty and having poor outcomes after surgery. So if we think about classic outcomes like morbidity and mortality, we're typically, even after adjusting for other you know, patient uh, level variables and procedural variables, looking at probably a, a threefold or greater risk of uh, you know, mortality or serious morbidity after surgery. On an absolute basis, older people with frailty probably experience a complication about 50% of the time, so obviously pretty substantial. But it also impacts things that patients and their families really care about that we maybe don't do such a good job of, of measuring. It certainly impairs their ability to functionally recover after surgery, can impact their ability to get home successfully when discharged from hospital, and can certainly 